Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video, we're going back to my Pygmy Sundew carnivorous plants. We are going to be propagating them again from Jemmy and we're going to look at how we did last year. Results were mixed. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Last year I did a video where I propagated my gorgeous little pygmy sundews from highly modified leaf blobs called jemmy. They form in the spring, over, over winter and into the spring, and they look a bit like a seed. They come from the crown of the plant and they start to swell up and then when they're ready they release and create the next generations of the pygmy sundew. I did three varieties last year, Scorpioides, Pulchella and Rosiana Giant Form. So let's have a look at the results of that propagation session. These are my three parent pots of plants. So here's Pulchella. These are going to be really hard to see. They've sort of got themselves quite buried in the moss, but I'm reluctant to just go ahead and start weeding them because there's a strong chance I've got seedlings in there. So I want them to start showing their colour before I start pulling them about. Porcello was probably my worst performer. It produced the least jemmy and this is the resulting pot of plants. That's all I got. So I didn't get very many jemmy and I got really poor germination of the jemmy that I sowed. There's a really strong chance that anything that's in there is actually spatulata because that gets everywhere. This is Rosiana Giant Form, which is just such an adorable name because it's minute. <laughs> I've already taken Jemmy from the parent this year. Do ignore the little capensis that has sewed itself in. I will move that out into something else. That had some really nice Jemmy on it this year, so that was that was great. I managed to get four pots worth of jemmy out of my rosiana last year. Not full coverage, but I got some nice little colonies happening. This one I need to take the jemmy from today, and the others I've done already. And you might just be able to see the green blobs on the soil surface there. Those are the jemmy, the little tiny, tiny ones, not the not the bit of perlite, the little tiny green one. They form in the crown of the plant, just like this. And you do need to take them off. So that they don't get stuck and maybe rot the plant. Then here's my Scorpioides mother plant. And here are the three pots of Jemmy that I managed to get from her last year. Now you will see that she is a much more vigorous type of carnivorous plant. She forms these long stems and gradually the leaves die off towards the base and they form these gorgeous shaggy trunks almost. And all the green growth happens just right at the top there. These ones have already had their jemmy harvested and I popped some of them into the pot just to sort of fill the planter up to the edges. I've potted up the adult plant from the little pot it was in and sown a load of jemmy on the soil surface around them. And then along with the rosiana we're going to go ahead and harvest the last of the scorpioides jemmy. I had no idea I was going to be so successful with the pygmy sundews. I've tried sowing seeds of carnivorous plants. I think I've done 
all the ones I grow, um, Saracenia, Dionia, Venus flytrap and Drosera, all the different sundews, with zero success, literally zero success. <laughs> I normally do divisions of carnivorous plants, so the Venus flytraps and the Saracenia are rhizome forming, so you can divide those and pot them on either into separate pots or, or just sort of expand a colony. And with the Drosera, the sundew, you can pull clumps apart and pot them into separate pots. Uh, there's no rhizome, it is just root systems, but just the same as you would a, a perennial, you can do that quite easily. But because my seed sowing had been so tragically awful, I had no idea that I was going to be this successful <laughs> with pygmy sundews. And they're so cute. I love them. Don't know why I waited so long to get them. <laughs> I may have recently just treated myself to another one from, of course, Triffid Nurseries. Where else? I'm very excited for that to come. You may remember last year that I said that you have to be very careful where you plant your jemmy. They have to be planted where you want them to grow. You can't sort of set them off in a seed tray and then put them into the pot that you want them to be in. They have very fragile root systems, quite unlike all the other carnivorous plants. So you have to sow them where you want them to grow. That's why even though I've got very uneven spacing here on this pot of Rosiana, I couldn't do anything about it. Once they were growing, that was it. That was where they were going to grow. I couldn't prick them out and move them around. I have just recently divided up all my carnivorous plants and my collection is definitely expanding. The greenhouse is still ram full of dahlias, bonsai and carnivorous plants and I've got very very little room to work. It's fine. What a problem to have, eh? <laughs> So I've got myself set up with some of my favourite eco-co compost here, the carnivorous plant with perlite. And I've just damped it down with some rainwater. If you can't use rainwater, then you must use something like reverse osmosis water or distilled water. You cannot use tap water and you cannot use pond water or anything like that. They've got too many nutrients in them and they will kill carnivorous plants quicker than anything. I've got two of my favourite terracotta pots. Ew. Pot may be frost proof but the label itself is not. <laughs> and I'm just going to fill those up. I've actually got some really interesting, well I think they're interesting, experiments coming up with carnivorous plants and also with bonsai this year. I'm going to try and make them as scientific as I can and maybe you might want to join in with your own experiments. I think that would be really cool. We can compare results. If anybody wants to do a collaborative video on carnivorous plants or bonsai with me then let's talk. <laughs> with the carnivorous plants it's going to be a comparison of peat free composts versus peat based composts. If you've watched my carnivorous plant videos you will know that I have a very 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 good success rate with my carnivorous plants in this particular cocoa fibre, cocoa peat, carnivorous plant mix. My plants are spectacular every year and I can't argue with the results but there are still some who say that you cannot grow carnivorous plants in anything but peat. Now the Carnivorous Plant Society of the United Kingdom 
is doing its own study into peat free growing and looking at coir as an alternative and eCoco who I get my compost from are actually running an experiment with a real scientist because I'm not a real scientist to determine whether cocoa fibre coir is a viable substrate for carnivorous plants and in fact whether it actually has more benefits to the plant than peat does. So I'm really excited about what that is going to tell us. I hope they're going to publish that because I'm just I'm fascinated, really fascinated. It really is a good idea to have damp compost before you do this because it's really hard to water these from above but the compost especially at the moment the sun is so hot in the greenhouse that the top compost can start to dry out especially as all my other carnivores are in hibernation at the moment so I'm not giving them lots and lots of water they're having some water but not lots of water I have got a little mister bottle that I can just damp the surfaces down if I need to but starting with a damp substrate in the first place is great so this is Scorpioides this is the one that really forms tall trunks and it is they're tiny they're 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 tiny they're what inch and a half tall look at that that is the carcass of a fly they may be small but boy they can eat <laughs> so last year I did a really clear demonstration using cotton buds to remove the jemmy from the tops of the plant this year I am just going to use my fingers carefully partly because I was so successful last year that <laughs> I haven't got room for an awful lot more of these so here are the jemmy on the plants and here is one on my fingertip they are really really small so if you haven't got a terribly even distribution of jemmy onto your soil surface now is the time to divide them up a little bit don't wait until they're growing you're not going to cover them you are literally going to leave them on the soil surface there existing pot. Scorpioides done. So hopefully there you can see the difference 
in size between a Scorpioides jemmy and the Rosiana giant form jemmy. They are minute. When I was sewing them I was almost at the point of needing them to have my reading glasses on. <laughs> so I can increase the bulk on this colony by just sprinkling some around. I don't need to sew them into a brand new pot. But then the rest I will sew onto this new one. Just domed up the surface ever so slightly, literally ever so slightly. I didn't bother to do that last time. The compost did sink a little bit, but you're going to tend to look down on them anyway, I think. So there's the mother colony with most of her jemmy gone. I think I've found all of them. There might be the odd one that I haven't managed to get out. But that'll be fine. Most of them is better than none of them. <laughs> and then here is the new pot. And you may just spot some little tiny pink and green specks on the soil surface. I'm really looking forward to doing my video series about different substrates that are suitable for carnivorous plants. I hope it's going to have some really interesting results. I've got some new carnivorous plants coming which I've bought from Trivid Nurseries. They should be here middle of next week at the latest. Um, I've bought some of their compost. Uh, I've got some more eCoco compost coming and what else have I bought? Oh, I bought one that is the sort of compost you find on the shelf at the garden centre. Uh, it doesn't make any claims as to what its content is but we'll get into that on, on the other videos and it will be a series because we will follow the progression of the plants. I want to see how they do, how they take initially how they do through the heat of the summer, how they go off into dormancy in winter, how they come back through the following year and then as I say I've also got some comparison videos going in my mind for bonsai as well. I'm gonna need a bigger greenhouse though. <laughs> right well that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube and until next time, bye!